Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, we will be looking at the problem pairs from the search section in the Hacker Rank Interview Preparation Kit playlist. And I think it's 30 second video uh, in the playlist and it is marked as a medium and is for score 50. And this particular problem is very analogous to the problem which we solved earlier that is ice cream parlor. It's very similar uh, with, with a few changes uh, because in the last problem, they ask us the index and in this particular problem they are asking us the count of pairs. So let's start with the problem definition after that we'll look at the basic approach and optimize approach. We'll try to solve this particular problem in O of n time and after that we'll uh, start with the code. So I'll be adding time steps in the track so you can directly skip to the part whichever you like. So let's start with the problem definition. So we will be given an array of integers and a target value. So here target value would be a numeric value like 1, 2 or uh, anything and we need to determine number of pairs which are possible by having the absolute difference between them we will get the target value. So let's assume uh, the given array is 1, 2, 3, 4 and the target value is 1. So we need to find number of pairs uh, which can give us the target value. So 1 and 2 the absolute difference is 1. 2 and 3 absolute difference is again 1 and 3 and 4 absolute difference between them is again 1. So we have 3 pairs here. So this is the case we need to find number of pairs. So let's start with the explanation. Okay this is this is the problem. So whenever such problem comes uh, the natural thinking pattern or the basic solution which comes to our mind is we'll store this particular value uh, into array or any container and after that we'll let's say this is the target value so what we can do is we'll check if 1 plus 2 uh, do we get any pairs or not so 1 and 5 the absolute difference will be 4 so it is not equal to 2 so we will not be counting that then 1 and 3 yes the absolute difference would be 2 so yes we'll count let's say we increment one count after that 1 and 4 the absolute difference would be 3 and it is not 2. Again similarly 1 and 2 absolute difference would be 1 and not the target value. So again this particular procedure can, uh, can be carried out for 5 as well. After that 3 and we will iterate all the values for each value in the loop. So this will basically take a O of n square approach and we know this is a very expensive in the terms of time complexity and we don't want to use it. So we are looking for a better solution because it is a, a marked as a medium problem. So we'll see a work around this particular basic approach. Okay. Now let's look at the second intuition or the second approach of solving this particular problem. What we were doing in the first or basic approach was we were taking one element and we were checking absolute difference uh, for that particular element with all the different elements. And that was causing O of n square and we did not want to that to happen to our solution. So what we can do is we can sort these values. Let's say we'll go with 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay. Now we can what we can do is we'll add the target value. Let's say 2 here. So 1 and 2 it will be 3. We'll simply check if 3 exists or not. If exists so we'll increment the count. Similarly after that we will increment 2 here. So 2 plus 2 will be 4. We will check if 4 exists or not. Yes. So we will again increment 1. So the first count or the first pair of count was of 1 and 3. After that second count of pair was of 2 and 4. Similarly we will come at 3's position and we will add 2 value here. So it will be 5. We will check if 5 exists in our map or not or the container we chose. So it will be again a yes. So again we will be incrementing one value. After that we will check if for 4. So 4 plus 2 6 it is not present. Similarly 7 is not present. So number of pairs which can give us the target value is 3. So if you see in this particular approach we have to first take the input. After that we have to sort and after sorting we need to again take one loop in order to check all the value. So it is again a bit expensive in the time complexity I think it's a viable solution and the test cases will be passed by using this particular solution however we can still improvise on this part we'll see how we can do this so let's consider at the time of input uh, so what we did in the first problem that was ice cream parlor we check the values at the time of insertion only so in this case what we'll do is we'll take a map let's consider this 
and in this particular map we'll check the previous value the absolute difference value exists or not so what how will uh, have this happen is let's consider we are taking the input so first input is one so we'll check there are two possibilities because we are considering absolute difference so one can, could be negative value or one could be a positive value right we can like add negative target or we can add a positive target so for one which are the two values which can form a pair uh, that will give the value target two is one could be minus one and again one could be three so we'll check if these two values exist in our map or not so for one uh, as of now we don't have any values in the map so no so we'll move ahead so let's say five is uh, now at our disposal is, and is being taken as input so in this particular case only one has been occurred or the stored in the map so for five again there will be two values let's say three and seven by doing this operation three and five we can get a target value or we can get by a five or seven seven so we'll check if for three or seven exist here no so in this case we'll move ahead so five will be stored in the map okay of now while taking the input as three we'll check two values first minus the target value so this will be one and plus the target value so two is target value as of now so this will be five and one so we'll check if one exists yes one exists so one pair can be formed that is one and three so yes we'll increment the count here after that we'll check if five exists yes five exists so three and five could be another pair so we'll again increment one count okay the, this is done for 3. After that, 4 will be taken as an input. For 4, again, there will be 2 values for which it can form pair. So, one could be 2, another could be 6. Right? So, we'll check if 2 exists in our, in our map. Uh, as of now, no. So, let me add a 3. Okay. Uh, so, 2 does not exist and also 6 is not present in the map. So, we will move ahead. 4 will be added to the map. Now, we'll come at 2's uh, input value. So we'll check for two, there will be two values again. So one could be zero and another could be four. So we'll check if zero exists here, no. Four exists here, yes. So we'll increment the count. So it will form three pairs or the number of count of pairs will be three. And the pairs which, uh, which can be formed will be three and five. After that, two and four and one and three. So these are the three pairs. Okay, the flow for this particular problem will go as we'll take the input and at the time of taking the input, we'll check if the particular value or complement of the value exists or not. So let's say we take the input one and we know the target value, let's assume that as k. So we'll check if one plus k exists or not, one minus k exists or not. If the, those value exist, we'll increment the count. If not, we simply add that particular value to our map. So let's see the coding for this particular problem. And if there is any doubt, do let me know in the comments. So I could uh, help you with that. Okay. Now before solving this particular problem, uh, again, uh, as we do always, there are two things which we we'll particularly pay the attention to. So first is uh, what is input and how it is being taken. So if you look at the constraints, uh, so n is the uh, size of array and it is in the range of 0 to 10 to the power 5 k is the target value which is in the range of 0 to 10 to the power 9 and we again have the operation that is plus minus so we'll uh, simply take the long value in order to avoid any further complications and after that we have the array so basically we'll take the values of n k and an array and we'll perform the operation and we'll find find out how many number of pairs exist so let's start. So before starting, let me write a template. Okay, now we have a basic template ready. So let's start with the code. So first there will be two values in n and let I am taking long k because it is in the power of 10 to the power 9. After this, there will be input of these two values. So what we can basically do is c in n and k. After this, we will require a counter. So we can basically take a let's say long count and we'll equate value to 0. After this, the input will be taken. So it will be basically from the i is equal to 0 till the n values. And now we want to do our all the operation in this particular loop only. So let me take another variable. Let's go with int or let's go with long. Let's say 
input so let's assume we take the input and after taking the input we want to check the target value that is plus k or minus k and that particular value exists or not so in in that case we will be using rather than using an array we will use an ordered map because the lookup for that particular value is in the terms of o of 1 and it's very powerful or it is very efficient in the time terms of time complexity because you can look up for that particular value in o of 1 time so uh, before using unordered map let me declare that so it will be unordered map and for this we will be taking let's say long long key and value pair will be in the terms of int so we can basically add plus plus so and the name will be map okay so let me add this as a comment okay we have taken the input now we want to check if the plus k and minus k value exist or not so how we can do this is we'll simply take a if loop and for this we'll check the value that is input and plus k exist or not so if this particular value exists so it will return one and if this is one so if loop will be uh, valid and we'll increment our count similarly i want to check the value for input minus k value as well because there are two possibilities right because we are considering absolute difference so okay and these two values are done and let's say that particular value do not come across these two loops so that's sim very simple we simply want to add the value of or the given input into our map and we'll simply add plus plus and we have counted all the counts for each uh, input and I think it's good to go so I can simply write C out count so let's check if it works or not and I hope you got the logic compilation error okay input so I miss semicolon okay, let's check again <coughs> Okay, it passes basic test cases. Let's check for the hidden test cases. If you are someone who is trying to solve all the problems from hackerang interview preparation kit, uh, do check other videos. And if you feel there is a need of improvement on my part, do let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. And I'm assuming it passes all the test cases, so I'll wait. <laughs> yes, it passes. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of the day.